at Harks back to when I was a young kid and it was during the 60s my father would hang out with these architects and stuff and um, we'd go on a Saturday or a Sunday and we'd spend time like pouring foundations for houses that they'd designed and stuff like that so I think that there was one particular um, friend of my father's Neil Hay he built a house up um, Mount Pleasant I went there and it was absolutely stunning he had a sunken pit made all his own furniture designed all his own furniture and it was like I do remember that as like one of my biggest influences and then that was sort of I suppose oppressed when I was like doing in the antique business with my father. I started with him in 1979 as an antique restorer and wood carver and um, at that time we restored Victorian and Georgian furniture and you know it was actually quite bad because we actually stripped a lot of the furniture and didn't get the patina. It wasn't until later that I realised that that's the, the key thing is to keep things as original as possible. My interest with antiques came from my father. He was a cabinet maker, London City's a Guild's cabinet maker. Pretty amazing craftsman, really. And um, so I started with him, and uh, but before that, I mean, you know, he was selling antiques and doing restoration and making furniture. And in our basement in Cass Bay, um, he used to keep all these antiques that he would sell to people. And probably the one of the biggest influences for me to get into mid-century furniture, I had this friend who passed away last year, Peter Trainer from Waimati, and um, he used to come and visit me and sell me antiques when I had a shop selling French antiques. And he always had something different in the back of the, his van, and at one time he, I remember he had this particular table, and he said, oh, this is an Eames something or other table. And it picked, sort of piqued my interest, that, and in, from there he used to bring other things, and I gradually started buying a few pieces around town, and from that, I had friends in America and I went on a, my partner told me to get on a plane and go buying in California, which I did. And uh, we went down to the Rose Bowl in LA and did the Alameda flea market in San Francisco, which is nothing like they used to be, because this was just pre before the internet. So it was, stuff used to come from the Midwest and all over and you could find amazing things. The only thing I lacked at the time was knowledge and you only get knowledge from Time. So that's where it really grew and from there I started buying in, in Denmark and finally in the last six years buying in um, Italy. Wrote to this guy in um, Northern Italy and he said come and visit. So I jumped in the car and did a slow trip through Padua and um, Bologna and ended up at this town uh, called Piacenza. And um, I got there early. I wasn't supposed to see them till the next day, so I wandered around town and then went in front of their shop. And then his wife came out and said, it knew knew who I was for some reason. And it was like we were long lost friends. He arrived, and it was like it was so moving that it was incredible. You know that I was in a car buying with him. I wasn't actually on a buying trip, but I ended up turning it into a buying trip for about five days. He drove me all around northern Italy and keep going, I'm so happy, I'm so happy to have met you. And it was like, that was just incredible. And I bought some of the most amazing things. One of the pieces, of, or the set that I've kept is the Giaponte um, Silver Tea Service, which you've filmed, but it's not in an auction, I do want to keep that. And that was made, designed by Giaponte in the early 30s, it's scratched on the bottom 1933. So yeah, that was an amazing experience and um, you know, up until last year was the last shipment I bought from Italy, which a lot of pieces are actually in the, au the auctions that are coming up. A lot of them I've never even unwrapped until we had to take the photographs for them and send them to Auckland.